Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapsed version of this very sweet little boy in soft pastel. I hope that you enjoy this. Please do hit subscribe here on YouTube to show my channel some support. And also there will be full-length real-time tutorials from this piece on my Patreon channel and there are links in the description to that. But I hope that you enjoy seeing this come together. So as always, I make a start with the background and I'll show you the photo reference here just quickly so that you can see briefly what I'm working from. And I've had to make a few changes in the composition of this one and most importantly, just changing the background to something a little bit more simple, um, but keeping some of the lovely greens which you can see behind him in the photo reference. I thought that green would really set him off quite nicely. So I've gone for something quite subtle and out of focus, uh, just allowing all of our focus to stay on him and his sweet expression. But there will be a full length tutorial on this background on my Patreon channel, as that's something that I often have to create, uh, just changing backgrounds in photo references making something a little bit more painterly and as I said just keeping it very simple and hoping that our attention will be nicely on the little boy. So the photo reference also made it quite tricky because he is mostly in the shadows, not in very dark shadows so his skin tones were still quite light but when you haven't got nice directional lighting in a people portrait then you often find that the skin tones can look a little bit flat. It's difficult to bring out the 3D-ness of the face when there is no good directional lighting really catching some of the features. So to me that's always the trickiest type of face to paint. You can see that the, the light will be coming from the top of his head. So behind and above him is where the light source is. And that does make it tricky to try and, uh, as I said, make some of those features on the face look 3D. So I try to bring in a lot of colour in the skin tones. You can see here in my early layers. Um, making use of greens and lilacs and all sorts of colours that you might not necessarily associate with skin tones. But I find that when you're painting something that's in the shadows especially, you get a lot of different colours bouncing off it, a lot of different reflected colours. So the greens make sense to me because he is in a garden, so he's outside, he may have lots of green bouncing off the surroundings. There's also a lot of um, cooler tones with those lilacs to create a bit of shadow tone. And you also have to take into account what clothing the person is wearing. So he's got a pretty bright red collar right next to his face. So there are always a lot of things to consider when you're painting a portrait. And it's important to look for what colors are surrounding the person and what you might find reflecting off of their face. But my aim here was to try and bring out a bit more lighting on the face and especially in the eyes, in the photo reference, the eyes were super dark. And knowing that he's got beautiful blue eyes, I didn't want to make them too bright because then you're going to lose that in shadow effect. But I did bring out a little bit more detail in them. So you've got to be careful as well not to bring out too much and not to brighten it too much. Because then you really will lose that lighting effect. But these are all things that I'll talk about in the real-time tutorials from this piece. I think it's a really good one to make tutorials from as so many elements were quite tricky, even though it's quite a nice, simple little portrait with not too much going on. So for this piece, I'm working on light yellow velour paper. I tend to use both velour paper and pastel matte paper for my work and I switch between the two depending on the job that I have. And in this case, because I wanted to keep it a little bit more uh, painterly, 
and not go for the 100% realism that you can achieve on pastel matte paper. So I really wanted my marks to have the ability to be a little bit more loose with the photo reference especially. Not a huge amount of detail, so I normally go for pastel matte paper if I've got a really, really detailed photo reference to work from. So in this case, the velour paper allowed me just to keep that lovely softness. But you can see you can get a lot of detail on this paper too. So that lovely sunlit hair just catching the light on the top of his head. So being careful not to bring my highlights down too far down his forehead or down the sides of his head. Again, this part should make a really nice tutorial just showing how to get all of those wispy hairs. Using mostly the bigger sticks, I use predominantly unison pastels. But you can see that I'm bringing in some pastel pencil just to tweak the edges of certain parts of it. But you really do get the main strength of colour and pigment from those soft sticks. So I like to try and use those as much as possible. But even though it wasn't the most detailed photo reference ever, sometimes that can work out really nicely, I find. If you get some interesting lighting, and also just because of the little boy himself, such a delightfully joyful pose and a lovely little smile. So I had a lot of fun working on this piece. He was a real joy to look at. So on to that lovely stripey shirt. I do love painting clothing. It's always one of my favourite parts of a portrait. And this month over on my Patreon channel, we're looking at fabrics in particular. So this was a nice piece to work on while I'm thinking up some ideas for my patrons to further explore painting fabrics. As that's something that I get to paint a lot, whether it's in my people portraits and the clothing that they're wearing, or maybe it's in a pet portrait and the soft bed or blanket that they're lying on. But fabrics are something that crop up in lots of my commissioned work. So again, I will make some longer tutorials from this part of the portrait. It's one of those pieces that incorporated lots of different elements from a nice out of focus bokeh style background right through to some interesting uh, fabrics and creases. So I think that there'll be a lot of useful videos from this on my Patreon channel afterwards. But I hope that you've enjoyed seeing it come together in time lapse. I certainly enjoyed working on it. It's nice sometimes to get a portrait or a painting just without a really complicated, laborious background. So this was a relatively simple little portrait for me to work on. And sometimes that's just what you need on your work list when a lot of the time you're working on really complicated, bigger paintings. So I really enjoyed this one. And I hope that if you have enjoyed seeing it come together here, that you will hit that subscribe button here on my YouTube channel. I have lots of time lapse videos like this, but I also have a lot on my YouTube channel that's in real time. Um, some proper instructional videos here too, if you would like to learn more. But as I mentioned, the absolute best place to learn from me is on my Patreon channel. So I'll add links to that in the description, also here at the end of the video. So thanks very much for watching. And until next time, happy pastling.